There's a truth that serious gardeners often discover too late your soil doesn't need endless bags of fertilizer to thrive. In fact, adding too much fertilizer can burn roots, kill worms, and leave the ground weaker in the long run. What it really needs is microbial life. The billions of unseen organisms that digest organic matter, release locked up nutrients and build living soil. Fertilizer may give a quick boost but microbes build lasting fertility. And the secret I'm about to share is one that ancient farmers used to feed those microbes directly. It's a method that turns tired soil into a rich living sponge in just weeks. The best part is it's simple, inexpensive and still works today better than most modern fertilizers ever could. Stick with this, because the way it works might just change how you garden forever. Soil health begins with microbes, not chemicals. Modern gardening often focuses on NPK, the nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium that fertilizers provide. But soil scientists know that nutrients in the bag are useless unless microbes are there to process and deliver them to plants. A teaspoon of healthy soil can hold more living organisms than there are people on Earth and those organisms are the true engines of growth. Bacteria convert nitrogen into plant-ready forms. Fungi trade phosphorus in exchange for plant sugars. Protozoa, nematodes, and earthworms form a cycle of digestion and release. When microbes thrive, plants grow stronger, resist pests, and produce more food without constant outside input. Fertilizer alone cannot do this. It may spike the soil with minerals, but if the microbial workforce is missing, those minerals often wash away or stay locked up where roots cannot reach them. The ancient method we're about to explore bypasses this weakness by directly feeding the microbes themselves. The ancient trick comes from fermented plant teas. Centuries ago, farmers in Asia, the Middle East, and parts of Africa learned that steeping plants in water created a powerful tonic for their soil. Instead of applying raw manure or dumping compost alone, they discovered that fermentation unlocked something different. Living solutions packed with beneficial bacteria, yeasts, and enzymes. These brews acted like microbial starters, similar to how a sourdough starter kickstarts bread or how yogurt cultures transform milk. In soil, they multiplied fast, colonizing the root zone and breaking down organic matter into plant-available nutrients. Today, this is known in regenerative agriculture as fermented plant juice or indigenous microorganism culture, but the roots of the method are thousands of years old. It was the ancient farmer's way of biohacking their soil without even knowing the microbiology behind it. How fermented plant teas work in your garden. When you take fresh green matter like weeds, grass clippings, or alfalfa, and combine it with a sugar source like molasses or jaggery, microbes rush to work. The sugar fuels bacteria and yeasts, while the plant matter provides both nutrients and microbial inoculants from the leaves and stems. In just one to two weeks, the liquid ferments into a concentrated microbial broth. Diluted with water and poured into soil, it doesn't just add nutrients, it adds life. Worms are drawn to the sugars, fungi latch onto root hairs, and bacteria multiply in every pore of soil. Unlike fertilizer, which forces plants to uptake nutrients immediately, this method builds a balanced cycle where nutrients are slowly unlocked and constantly renewed. The result is soil that remains fertile long after application, needing no synthetic boosters. So, here's the step-by-step -step method to make your own microbial brew. Start with a clean container, ideally a food-grade bucket or barrel with a loose-fitting lid. Fill it about one-third with freshly cut plant material. This could be fast-growing weeds, comfrey, alfalfa, or even vegetable scraps. Just be sure to avoid anything heavily sprayed with chemicals. Next, add a sugar source equal to about one-tenth the weight of your plant material. For instance, if you have 2 kilograms of greens, add 200 grams of molasses or brown sugar. The sugar stabilizes the fermentation and feeds microbes. Add just enough non-chlorinated water to cover the plant matter. Stir well then loosely cover so gases can escape. Over the next 7 to 14 days, stir occasionally as bubbles form. Once the bubbling slows and the liquid smells sweet-sour rather than rotten, it is ready. Strain out the solid, store the liquid in a sealed bottle, and keep it out of direct sunlight. For application, dilute the liquid at a ratio of one part ferment to 20 parts water. That means a single liter of fermented plant tea can make 20 liters of soil drench. Apply weekly around the base of plants or pour directly onto compost piles to speed decomposition. 
Within weeks, you'll notice darker soil, richer smells, and an increase in worm and insect activity. Plants often respond with deeper green leaves and stronger stems, a sign that the soil food web is thriving. So, let's talk about some mistakes to avoid when making microbial teas. Probably the most common mistake is sealing the container too tightly. Fermentation, you know, produces gases, and if there's no way for those gases to escape, pressure can build up, or the mixture might turn anaerobic, which leads to foul odors and honestly some pretty harmful microbes. Always use a loose lid or just a cloth cover. Another mistake folks make is using chlorinated water. Chlorine actually kills the very microbes you're trying to encourage. If tap water is your only option, let it sit out overnight before using it. This allows the chlorine to dissipate. A third mistake is applying the brew undiluted. It might seem like using it straight would be stronger but concentrated solutions can actually shock plant roots and cause imbalances in the soil. Always respect the 1 to 20 dilution rule for soil drenching. And lastly, don't wait too long after fermentation stops. The microbes are most active within a few weeks, so it's best to use the liquid regularly instead of letting it sit for months. That way, you'll really get the most benefit from your microbial tea. So, why does this method outlast chemical fertilizers? Well, fertilizers might provide nutrients quickly, but honestly, they do very little to build long-term soil structure. Microbial brews, on the other hand, trigger a whole chain reaction. The sugars in the brew wake up dormant bacteria. The enzymes break down tough organic matter. Then the microbes secrete these sticky substances that help soil particles clump into aggregates, which really improves water retention and aeration. Over time, your soil becomes darker, softer, and more crumbly, the very definition of fertile earth. And because this method continually multiplies microbes, the soil stays alive even when weather stresses hit or crops pull heavily on nutrients. In short, you're not feeding the plant directly, you're feeding the underground community that, in turn, feeds the plant. That's exactly why ancient farmers could keep their land productive for centuries, all without modern fertilizers. Let's talk about some real-world ratios and examples for gardeners. For a small raised bed of one square meter, about one liter of diluted microbial brew per week is just right. That's 50 milliliters of concentrate mixed into 950 milliliters of water. For a larger garden with rows, you'd apply 10 liters of diluted brew per 10 meters of row length. If you're working with potted plants, 200 milliliters of diluted solution per pot every 10 days really works wonders. Now, on a compost pile, pour 2 liters of diluted brew evenly over a cubic meter of material to speed up decomposition by weeks. These ratios are flexible, but honestly, consistency matters more than quantity. The soil responds best when the microbial community is fed regularly, rather than in one big dose. This ancient method honestly connects past wisdom with modern science. What makes this technique so powerful is how it bridges traditional farming knowledge with what soil microbiologists now confirm. Ancient farmers didn't know the names of bacteria or fungi, but they definitely saw the results, healthier crops, fewer pests, and soil that stayed fertile year after year. Today we understand that these brews introduce lactobacillus, yeasts, and countless wild organisms that create a balanced microbiome underground. By using this method, modern gardeners are tapping into the same system that sustained civilizations long before chemical fertilizers were ever invented. It's a great reminder that sometimes the most effective solutions aren't the newest ones, but the ones that have stood the test of centuries. So, just some closing thoughts, and a quick call to action. If you've ever wondered why your soil seems tired even after adding fertilizer, or why your compost just takes too long to finish, the answer might not be more chemicals, but, honestly, more life. This ancient fermentation method builds that life quickly and sustainably, giving you fertile soil without the constant expense of store-bought inputs. It's easy to make, it works on every garden scale, and it leaves your soil richer with each passing season. If this guide helped you uncover the power of microbial brews, don't keep it to yourself. Share it with fellow gardeners, neighbors, or anyone trying to grow food without depending on expensive fertilizers. And before you go, Make sure to subscribe to Hydro Haven, where we'll continue to uncover practical, time-tested methods that transform ordinary soil into thriving ecosystems. The garden of your dreams isn't built on chemicals, it's built on life and the key to unlocking it is already in your hands.